Here we are. Hi, we are. you guys. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been on here for two weeks, right? Um, Longer, I think, longer. because we had School of the Prophets. Yeah, that's right. So We had lots of things going on, so we've been busy. Good to see everybody. Yeah, good to see y'all. I was in the UK for a week and got to go to Oxford University and see the mm -hmm. future of Bethel. Ooh. That place is uh, 1,100 years old. Uh, if you've ever been to Oxford University, it's actually a whole city. So the mm -hmm. city is Oxford, and 32 colleges make up what they call Oxford, and I got to be a part of touring that. It was beautiful, and honestly, I'm like, well, this will be Bethel 100 years from now, 150 yeah. years from now. It was incredible. I, I cried several times, just like, wow, this is amazing. This is going to be our future. So good. Providing the Lord doesn't come back tomorrow or the next mm. day or mm -hmm. again, always have to be ready for his return. Yeah, but you better be dream ready. Dream like, you know, he's not coming back for a thousand years and prepare like he's coming back right tomorrow. now. Yeah, it's great. It's totally. beautiful. Wow, I see all these people <coughs> telling us where they're tuning in from. It's like South Africa, Grand Rapids, Michigan, so cool. New Zealand, Chicago. Amazing. He said, someone even said, you look smarter. You spent some time in Oxford. It just <laughs> rubbed off on you. I hung out with some smart people for a week. That that can't hurt. And it cannot hurt you. It kind of right? makes you feel a little dumber, but. <laughs> yeah, it inspires you to <laughs> inspires. be really intelligent. Exactly. Right? I'm working on it. So good. Amazing. Well, you guys, we're going to do some live Q&A, per yeah. usual. Yeah. And so if you have questions while we're live, send them in the <laughs> chat, and we'll do our best to get to them. Yeah, for those of you that were uh, did online school, the prophets love to, I know we did a survey, but love to get your feedback, too. We're oh, for always, the online portion? Yeah, you know, because mm -hmm. we're, we're always... We're always trying to like make it better and yes. make sure you're being impacted. It's we put a lot of work into it, but yeah, you know, hard work doesn't necessarily mean great fruit, right? It totally. should, but doesn't necessarily. Not so. always, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Did anyone join us at School of the Prophets? I've a bunch of people Give us did. a little wave if you did. Yeah. So fun. Anyway, okay, so here we go. Let's jump into it. Q and A. Yeah, we have some really intriguing questions. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hit it off with. A big one. What are your thoughts about artificial intelligence? Mm, mm. <clears throat> Interesting. Well, first of all, my thoughts are, I think that the religious world has, is typically the latest adopters on technology. The what world? The religious world. Oh, religious world. You know, world. Like, uh, like our world in mm -hmm. some ways, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> like we tend to be very late adopters. Mm -hmm. and. And, uh, and unfortunately, that costs us souls because I do believe that technology, for example, the internet, you know, the, the early adopters were the, you know, pornographers. And so pornography mm. was all over the internet. Mm. And, you know, we came, I think, much later, the church came much later, and we're seeing that the internet is a wonderful tool when it's used rightly mm. to see people saved, you know, taught, delivered, healed. <clears throat> we have, you know, schools uh, online. The, you know, two dead raisings we had last year were on our on online schools. You know, so internet, really important. And yet right. we, you know, I as a 68-year-old man, you know, I came to the internet with suspicion and there was always teaching about how the mark of the beast was going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. And so mm -hmm. We tend to have all these fearful thoughts about how it's going to go. Yeah. And of course, you could say that some of that, some of the people's fears happened, right? Because you, you do have, you know, child pornography. You got, mm. now now we're seeing, you know, trafficking happening through the, you know, uh, web and internet. Yeah. <clears throat> but on the other side, hundreds of thousands of souls saved, mm -hmm. you know, delivered, taught. So I think AI is going to be the same way. I, I, I would love for us to get out of, the fir our first response is fear. Yeah. I'd love to get out of that mode. Like, I'm afraid, uh, you know, the, you know, robots are going to take over. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, okay, fear sells. Mm. People pick it up, conspiracy, fear, fear tells all kinds of stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the truth is probably somewhere that the AI will be used for evil, just like everything else is used for evil. Yeah. It's a tool. And I think that if we could be early adopters and we could, you know, get involved in AI 
and do our best to lay the core foundations and the core values in which AI is trained, right? Because we're talking a lot about who is going to actually police AI. And I have, I, I, I won't reveal who they are, but I have two friends. There's, there's a whole coalition right now talking about, <clears throat> not just talking about, there's a governing body beginning to form o over AI hmm. na internationally. Yeah. And um, two of my friends are on that, hmm. and they're they're strong believers. So I, I think that the future is bright, but the future is also, <clears throat> again, we, I, I think I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah. That's a great way of saying that. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like with anything new in life, often with just a transition, there's going to yeah. be little bumps in the road. There's going to be little, you know, hazards yeah. to be aware of but to be optimistic and actually how is this benefiting us and not just looking at all the negative of what could happen yeah and there's you know i mean i've read quite a bit about ai and then listening to my friends mm. I, i'm definitely no expert let me say totally. that but i mean you could clone someone's you know voice you can clone their letters yeah. and all, all of that you know creates a ton of you know okay well there's there, trust th issues yeah trust issues <laughs> yeah. but there'll be things that that are put in place that can't be cloned that will say this letter was written from me you know that, that weren't necessary like for example <clears throat> um i i got i signed up for something and it said fill out this uh these questions to know you're not a robot oh yeah yeah yeah. and it's like that. okay yeah so you know I, I did that little thing and it goes oh you're not a robot mm -hmm. and it, the letters will be like that you know it'll be like there are just oh, things that can't be duplicated, you know? Totally. They'll put some, like, reinforcements in place. Yeah, they'll have to because otherwise people write letters in your name. You're like, yeah, I didn't write that. Totally. Yeah. But, you know, those things will happen and mm -hmm. it, it'll, I, I think we're, I think we're getting ahead of it already. So that's good. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Okay. Next question. <clears throat> what does it look like to innovate with God? How do I partner with God in innovation? I feel like this is something that you talk mm -hmm. about a lot just because of, SQ Institute is kind of like a heartbeat behind the Institute is innovating with God and ideating and all that kind of thing. But I'm, I'm curious what you would say. I just had this greatest, um, I had a great experience when I was in the UK last week, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, actually. Yeah. And I got to go to YESA, Y-A-S-A, you can look it up. Mm -hmm. And YESA is this, you know, they have um, the uh, Tim, who's the CTO and founder of YESA, uh, what they do is they build electric motors for cars. Yeah. And he has developed the most ef uh, efficient motor in the history of the automobile. And he got that from a dream and a yes. vision. Yes, yeah. And he acted on it. And I think that the challenge isn't like, how do you get, you know, how do you get invention and innovation from God? <laughs> I think the biggest challenge is, are you acting on it? Mm. So I, I think a lot of people get stuff, they just don't do anything about it. Yeah, you think about some of the greatest inventions that, I mean, that have Absolutely. been created. And most of them, not most, I would say a lot of them have come from dreams. Yeah, I think Einstein's had. theory of relativity, relativity came from a dream. Yeah, and the, isn't the light bulb, like Ma electricity, Maxwell? Mm -hmm, Maxwell. I know Maxwell was... Uh, he actually invented what we now know. Electromagnetic wave. Yeah, like yes. the Wi-Fi and yes. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it goes on and on and on. All the early inventors, nearly all the early inventors believed in, at least in a God. Power. In God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, the, the challenge is, if you, if you get a little bit and you press into it, you'll get more. Yes. And I think the challenge is that, we have to learn how to press in. Mm -hmm. So Tim, my friend that in invented this new uh, electric motor, I mean, he got something, I think it was in 2008, and like it's taken him like 10 years before he had anything mm -hmm. that he could actually sell. Yeah. And now they sell the Ferrari, Lamborghini, and McLaren, and now uh, you know Mercedes three years ago bought them. But his journey was beautiful. It was, you know, he got an idea, he did some research, he, he put together, you know, what he could do in research with what he was learning from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it became something great. I think people oftentimes, you know, it's the glory of God to hide a matter 
Mm -hmm. But it's the glory of kings to search it out. Right, right, right. And I think that search out piece is really important for us. It is. If you get a little piece, if you press into it, you'll get another piece. Yeah. And what happens with so many people, including me at times, is I get a little piece and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing anything until I get I the go, rest Like, okay, God, and where's yeah. the full equation? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not trying to do any hard work over here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Totally. That's it. Right there. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Um Okay, it, it kind of a, a question to follow up on this. <laughs> okay, thing. but I mean, we we use this language in different settings. But somebody's asked, "What does it mean to receive a download from God?" We we use that often when we're explaining. Yeah. Oh, I received this download from the Lord, but what does that actually? What does mean? it mean in your like? Yeah, and I mean, you've been here a long time. What do totally. you think it means to you? And to receive a download, it feels almost like just language that we've created to explain that you have received some level of insight or input mm -hmm. or revelation from the Lord. So maybe that comes in different forms in different ways. It's mm -hmm. not like, oh my goodness, and then I accepted the download <laughs> and it just downloaded to my computer, yeah. but maybe more so like I had a dream and he yeah. downloaded to me. He he gave me mm -hmm. this insight into this problem that I'm having at work or with this person. Or maybe you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden your spirit just knows something. You just It just downloads right into you and you're like, mm, have you been dealing with X, Y, and Z yeah. and you just suddenly know something. So I think it's a way of explaining how the Lord speaks to mm -hmm. you about something in a variety of capacities or forms. Yeah, I have nothing to add. That That's a better definition than I had and I, I think it's perfect. I right. agree with that. <laughs> that's what it means to download. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Except the, the, the airdrop. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So Somebody's asked, how are we as Christians supposed to enhance our cities without overtaking them? You've talked about this a lot, like with yeah. the, the dominating or using language that, you know, yeah. sounds dominating. But how do we... Invading. Invading, that's the right yeah, word. That, yeah, the, you know, we have to take the mountains. Yep. <laughs> and, and I think, here's the deal. Okay, I, I, I want to really see if I can explain this yeah. well, because I think there's... I think our language has been very misunderstood Mm -hmm. We have two ways that we view reality. Yep. We have first heaven, which is like the seen the world. Normal. Yeah, our normal. And then we have this and then we have the spirit realm, which we would say second, second third heaven. heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when we used to talk about taking the mountains, yep. and you know, you know, on you know, in the invasion, mm -hmm. we were never thinking that we were invading first heaven. Like we're going to take over the world. We're going to be in charge of everything. We are always talking about destroying the works of the devil, yeah. which is second heaven. Like mm -hmm. the, the enemy who has taken hold of, for example, Hollywood is, let's say there's a first heaven Hollywood. It's creative, it's movies, it's right. whatever, right? Right, but <laughs> but then the enemy has come in. The, now I'm talking about the, the, the devil, yes. not people. And he has come in and he has perverted creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we're talking about, when we were talking about invasion, we were talking about destroying that influence at the mm -hmm. top of that mountain. Yes. That demonic influence that mm -hmm. was controlling people. Yeah. Uh, look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. It was controlling people. They were they're his puppets. Yeah. But when it comes to how we as believers interact with people, humans, as yeah. you say all the as the humans, with the humans, <laughs> we're never talking about like, we're going to dominate those guys. We need to be in charge. Yeah. We're talking about how do we serve in a way like Nebuchadnezzar, like Daniel served Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. He loved the king and he served him with his gift mix. Yes. Joseph served Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He was officially never at the top of the mountain. Totally. He served with his his prophetic gift and his gift of wisdom. Yeah, yeah. And we ask ourselves, like, how can we serve our city? What do you have? And maybe you have a gift of hospitality. I was sharing with the pastor the day. He's like, I have a small church, and I would love to, you know, have a, have influence on on my city in a way that's helpful. I'm like, well, what do you do well? He's like, I don't know. We don't have a lot of money. I said, well, have you ever thought about doing like, get, are you guys have a bunch of people who can do hospitality stuff like? make great meals and put on, you know, some kind of a, an event to honor the firemen or honor the mm -hmm. policemen or even honor, you know, maybe 
people in government who who are doing a great job yeah he's like yeah i said why don't you just start there like just do something amazing where you put on you know a little thank you for the fire department you make a great meal and you invite the people and you have your people he's like oh that's a great idea and it's like just find some place to use your gift if mm -hmm. you have a prophetic gift like daniel did great if you have a gift of hospitality you have a gift of compassion a gift of generosity and and just ask yourself who in my city can i serve with my gift yeah and just start there Beautiful. my 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 thing would be look out look outside the four walls of your church where the church kind of like serves itself all the time it's like mm -hmm. how do we get more people to come and it's like well mm -hmm. that's important it's also important that you think of areas in your city that are maybe even hurting yeah like when you read the newspaper or you know we read it on our apps but you can see that there's places where people are hurting and you're mm -hmm. like well can i help that I, I went to the convalescent hospital in weaverville for five years mm -hmm. every sunday and you know we visited each person in the convalescent hospital which was uh, probably you know 50 beds maybe 100 beds and then we did a little service for them like on sunday morning it was like 30 minutes long it was wasn't exciting it 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 wasn't it was just it was just loving on older people yeah it's so beautiful who were waiting for their exit into heaven yeah and just loving on them and a lot it's of them beautiful. did not have were not in their you know they had dementia and weren't there, it wasn't anything exciting it was just something that glamorous. needed to be done yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's so beautiful I love that. Kind of a follow-up. Somebody's asked, have you had citywide prayer meetings with other churches? What's the best strategy? Well, okay. You're, this is probably going to be a controversial answer. Oh. I, I think having people together, is uh, churches meet together and do stuff together is wonderful. The challenge I see, even in a city our size, which is not huge, you know, less than 100,000 people, is that sometimes you have to keep reducing the way you pray, what you say, what you'll do, because Joe doesn't think, Joe doesn't think you should do that. Joe, Pastor Joe doesn't think we should do this. And Pastor Henry doesn't think we should do it that way. And, and pretty soon, you know, what you're doing is so vanilla that it's not powerful. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to get together if you have great relationships with other leaders in the city and obviously pray together. But I also think that it's important to not wait for other people, other churches to gather. Because I, I guess I'm point. I guess I'm. I guess I'm saying this. I hear so much like when the churches unify, you know, we will change the city. And I'm like, you got twelve disciples who couldn't get along, mm. and they changed the world. Yeah. And if you think that they got along after, you know, they were born again, it's like Peter and you know, uh, Paul, Peter and, and Paul seemingly didn't I enjoy each other. I, I don't think Paul and Barnabas got along. And yet those guys, and those are just a few that we knew, main, main characters. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but they changed the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think that we should sit back and say, well, until we actually can all agree about how we're going to touch our city, this city's not going to be changed. I'm like, no, just go do something. And and then while you're doing it, people will join you if they want. And, you know, we were raising, uh, Bethel was, uh, we agreed to raise $1.2 million to keep uh, our um, police department, four of our police officers who prevent crime. We had to raise $1.2 million over a period of two years. And so, you know, I have, we have lots of friends, uh, pastors in the city. I sent them all a letter. I called many of them. We didn't raise even five cents from anyone else. No, no other churches gave to that. I, I'm not saying they did evil. They did wrong. I'm just saying they had another. They, they're doing stuff for the city, but they didn't want to participate in the thing that we we committed to. So we ended up, you know, giving most of it, and we raised a little bit. And I, I don't fault them. I'm like everybody has their thing. They they feel like God's called them to, and they're totally have ownership and invested in that. And, you know, and together we're making a big difference, but not necessarily with the same, everybody gets together and has a strategic mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my, uh, and other cities, I've heard uh, really great stories mm -hmm. last year, the year before, of how some churches got together and did some great stuff. 
And I'm like, that's great too. If you have those relationships, beautiful. yeah, I think that's wonderful. That's it, probably even better, actually. Yeah, but. it's so beautiful. I think what's powerful in meeting with other churches in your city is that you meet other believers that are in your city. Yeah, exactly. And the truth is you, you're on the same team. You're So it is beautiful exactly. to be able to meet people. It's like when you have um, like extended family dinners, you know, when <laughs> exactly. like all the uncles and aunts come together and you maybe don't <laughs> see them all the time, but you're like, oh, we come from the same lifeline. And there's something that's almost like re-grounding or like re reaffirming of like, oh, this is what we're doing this for. That's I beautiful. think there's I something agree. that's really beautiful about I, my, I guess my my thing is like don't wait till everyone gets together like mm. before you do family so to speak you know totally. before you do city stuff totally yeah so good beautiful well we're at time do you oh, want gosh. to pray for those watching today yeah. okay go for it so lord i we're talking about you being we're talking about us being spirit led having inventions innovation yes not being late adopters not being the last one to the game but actually being the head and not the tail. And Lord, let us be let us be the chief servants of all. Yeah. Let us be people that when we walk in the room, even in the room with unbelievers, that people are excited that we're in the room because we bring hope. Yeah. We bring joy. We bring peace. We bring vision. Mm -hmm. We 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 bring the Holy Spirit's you know uh, presence with us wherever we go. Mm -hmm. So we just bless the these these are it's kind of our extended family here and people who watch us in jesus name and we thank you lord we pray for an extraordinary extraordinary week this week yes amen. god bless you we'll see you next week